Hey everybody, it's AlexKid64, and here is another Feed the Beast, uh, Let's Play episode. Uh, now, I'm kind of ticked off at myself, because I literally just recorded a 30 minute video, and I realized that my mic wasn't plugged in. So, this episode, we're actually just going to be going through what I did, uh, before, while I was talking to myself, and then we're actually going to start some new stuff, uh, since I'll have the time to do it. So just some brief updates. Uh, we added this room, which will be for liquids, because uh, we'll be acquiring a lot of different liquids in the game. Uh, we added these two barrels for gravel and smooth stone. We got some more stuff in here, a bunch of glass I smelted up, and some other various things. There's something in here, but I don't want to show you that yet. And then there's also a little bit of a thing. Uh, we talked about how I didn't have a lot of tin. And that was because I was actually mining. And I turned on creative mode to uh, go to this, which is actually an extra inventory slot, kind of for creative mode. And I put some stuff in here, forgot about it. So I actually had more zycorium in there, and then I had 50 tin. So I smelted that up, and that's all in here now. Um, yeah, so sorry for cheating there, but it kind of had to be done. I had to carry some stuff back. Uh, I also had a lot acquired from mining out that area, and then also mining out down here, which is the basement now. And you'll see I have some stuff set up over here. If you can guess what's going here in the future, I will... Uh, give you a shout out in one of the videos just leave a comment what you think is going to go there based by uh, how I have dirt right now but it's kind of nice down here there's a nice little water area and this was actually a huge cave kind of and then I just put walls around it and all that kind of stuff but a uh, sorting machine is going to go down here as you can tell it's right above our storage room so very cool and then uh, I'll have some stuff in here our lava system is going to be over here since we can directly pump it up to our machines and yeah, very, very neat. What else I added? We made this guy, which is an alloy furnace. And you'll see that he is made simply by uh, putting eight bricks into a thing. So I took some gravel, used my minium stone. You can do four gravel to a minium stone, and uh, it makes you a clay. So we made a bunch of clay and made this guy. And basically, he makes brass by putting uh, copper and tin in here. And there's some other stuff we're going to use him for in the future, but this is mainly what I'm worried about for now. And then if we take the brass, and I'll actually make more, since, you know, you can never have too many of these, and we go grab some glass, we can make pneumatic tubes. And pneumatic tubes are pretty neat. Uh, they're these right here. And they're basically another way of transporting items. And uh, it's the red power way of doing it, which is pretty neat, not going to lie. But yeah, I'll show you exactly what I did out there. Uh, you can't really see out the window. But uh, I will show you what happened out there in a sec using pneumatic tubes. Now, you guys, I found the portal gun in the last episode. And by unanimous consent, you all commented that I should keep it. Uh, I was kind of hoping you guys weren't going to say that. Just because I wanted to build it and then kind of show you guys how it works and everything. But you know what? I'll keep it. And then what a lot of you said is to uh, just show you guys how to make it in the future and I think that that's actually a really good idea and uh, yeah so we're keeping the portal gun for now and I will show you guys how it works for those of you who have never played portal before one you should be banished to a faraway land to play it and uh, two it's really sweet so basically you have our portal gun here and you'll see this little like screen blue things that I have on my cursor and basically left click is your uh, light blue portal and then right click is your dark blue portal and what you can do you can basically walk through and you come out the other one so we can set up you know that over there and go whoop, just like that so it's very cool and then another thing we can do with these is by pressing G we can kinda use that as like a gravigon and we can basically just move around blocks which is really sweet so we can kinda just like put him in midair and boom he falls and then he'll go to wherever he's closest to but let's put him back because uh, we don't want to be messing up my house. Come on, get in there. This is very useful if you want to move like mob spawners. Uh, it will work. Or it will actually move full chests full of stuff. So we can move that, place it back, and then all of our stuff is still in there. So that's really cool. Uh, I like that a lot. And there is a way to get rid of the portals 
and kind of reset them. Just I don't know the key for it. So if you do know the key for it, please leave a comment, and uh, I'd really like to know how to do that. So thank you. Uh, comments from the previous video. Uh, basically, just you guys telling me to keep the portal gun and then show you how to make it. We also had Compe, I want to believe was his name, uh, told me what's the seed. And I will leave the seed for you guys. I don't think it's in here at all now. But I will get the seed for you and then the coordinates of how to get to this exact very spot. And then you guys can just waypoint teleport over here and do that. But that leads me to the next thing I want to say. Uh, I took out Pam's Harvest Craft because it started to lag the clients a little bit. And there's just way too much in the mod pack for us to be doing all of this. So I took out Pam's Harvest Craft. I'm kind of sad about it, but... If I ever want to come back to it in the future, then we can always just add it back for an episode and see what happens. Uh, but yeah, that's gone for now. But in its place, I want to do something for you guys. Every seven episodes, I will release a world download. And I'll leave a link in the description every seven episodes. And I will literally show you guys... Uh, I will give a link for the download, and you guys can walk around my world, uh, see everything that I've made. You can make your own stuff, uh, but it'll be really neat. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Our next advancement is in the bomb craft room. Uh, I did a little bit of research over the break, and I got uh, the basic transmutation research. And basically what it does is in the crucible, if we put in one charis and three or two, I can't read that, two, two metallum, we can get uh, gold nuggets. So that's kind of cool, and that's the basic transmutation. Now, as we start researching more, we're going to get more uh, transmutations up here for all the different kinds of metals. So that's really cool. Uh, what else have we done? Yeah, here we go. This is what I want to start with, actually, for this episode. We are going to go to the nether and get lava factory set up. But this is what I started to make last episode, and it's basically a sheep shearer. It's really cool. And uh, these blocks right here, they were really simple to make. It was just pistons and cobblestone and wood, basically. The top of those are transposers. And I'll show you the recipe for that right here. Just some redstone, cobblestone, wood, and a piston. And uh, those basically, when they receive a redstone pulse, will collect items. And they don't always need a redstone pulse, but for what we're doing here, we want them to have one. And then these down here are deployers. And they will basically do whatever you put in it. So if we have shears in here, it's going to shear the sheep that's in front of it. If it has a hoe in it, it's going to hoe the ground right in front of it. And we will see that simply by uh, making this guy go a little bit faster. I'll explain what he does in a sec. But yeah, as you can see, it hoed the ground. So very neat, very cool. I'll move him back to its uh, 25 seconds it was at. And there we go. Now, basically what this is doing right now, and it's not fully operated yet, we need to fix it this episode, but this is a timer, and I actually have a plan for it back in my project table that I had made, but it basically allows a redstone signal to pulse, and it's going to spin around every 25 seconds now, it's going to send a redstone pulse. These are pneumatic tubes that are combined with redstone, and they can receive a redstone pulse as well as carry items, so they're kind of like an upgrade to it. So as this receives a redstone pulse, it's going to send a redstone pulse to these, and that's going to shear the sheep, the wool's going to collect in the transposer, and then send it to the nearest inventory. Now the problem I was having is, the wool is going into the deployer, and we don't want that to happen. So we actually want to, uh, I think I need to make a new pickaxe, mine died while it was recording. So let's clear out this area kind of behind here, and we want to get some jacketed wire. And jacketed wire is really... Actually, we might not even need jacketed wire. Hmm, let's see. Let's go make a pickaxe, and then I'll see what I can do here. Ruby pickaxe. Here's the uh, timer plan. As you can see, it was made with a bunch of these uh, wires and cathodes and stuff. And these are all made from stone wafers and uh, various amount of redstone, redstone torches, stone. Uh, I'll show you how to make some of those in the future, because we will need more of them. But we get the uh, stone wafers just from smelting stone. So it was really easy to get. I think I might even have, yeah, I have more of them over here because I was smelting it up as so. So as you can see, it, you know, recognize them in there and all that good stuff. So let's head back over, and I think I'm just going to grab some redstone, and we might be able to set this up without jacketed wire, and that would be really nice, not going to lie. So let's see what we can do. 
basically what we want to do is allow the top to have the pneumatic tubes, the transposers, but the bottom we want to just have a redstone pulse. And it's simply going to be done by using redstone, I want to say. So let's just connect more redstone tubes up here so that these transposers are still receiving a pulse. And then I believe, oh, we don't need it there. And I believe if we just set up redstone across here, that's going to uh, receive a pulse as well. So let's turn him on and see what happens. It's going to go around. Uh, it's going to take a while. Speed you up a little bit. Uh, every five seconds. We should see that pulse. Yeah, that pulsed. I don't think it's pulsing to the redstone. No, it's not. But we do have a solution for this. We're going to make something called red alloy wire. And red alloy wire is really neat. Uh, it's basically a, another form of redstone, but better in a way. So let's grab a bunch of redstone. I want to make a bunch of this stuff because it is useful. And then we need some... I don't know where I'm going. We need some copper. So... I have some copper already over there, but we're going to use the alloy furnace. Uh, this is a tool from Red Power. Yeah, Red Power. And if we combine copper and redstone in the uh, alloy furnace here, it's going to give us red alloy ingots. And three red alloy ingots are going to give us the uh, red alloy wire. Now, I didn't show you guys the recipe for the deployer, I just realized. So, yeah, it's very simple. Uh, but, yeah. So, let's grab... Almost done. I'll just wait it out. But red alloy wire, very neat, and I will show you why in just a sec. Okay. Three might be good enough for now. I'm going to want more in the future. But if we just put them in as so, take out our plan, we're going to get 12 red alloy wire. And the awesome thing about red alloy wire is we can run it like this and then right up the wall. So it's basically a form of redstone that can be anywhere and it never actually uh you don't have to use repeaters to keep it going like redstone has i think it's 15 blocks is the limit for redstone uh and that might not be right but yeah this will go on for a while so let's see if uh we can make this connect we can make it connect like that now i think we're gonna need yeah we're gonna need more but instead, why don't I just do this? I'll move the timer over to here, behind here. And uh, yeah, that'll work well. So as you can see, you could just pick this guy up whenever. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, this is gonna need redstone to connect to the pipes, like that. Yeah, that pulses. And then we want, uh, that to connect to there as well and do that <laughs> that <laughs> gotta take that out of there put the shears back now as you can see the wool doesn't really have anywhere to go at the moment so it's staying in the transposers it shouldn't be in the deployers no it isn't uh there's three in here why is there three in there uh oh we'll see in a sec but let's set up a barrel over here and i'm actually going to just use my minium stone this is kind of cool how we can do this just right click and it'll change a uh, cobblestone back to grass. Very easy way of neatening up your uh, area. So let's go grab a barrel and uh, I will be right back with that. Okay, I realize there is no point in having a gravel barrel because I only had 11 gravel in there. So I uh, just took that up right out of there and grabbed that so I didn't have to make a new one and go out and chop trees and all that crap. So let's head back up here and go set up our barrel. Basically how this should work, barrels always need to have, if you have it connected to a pipe, it needs to go in the front. You'll see it won't connect to the back. It will connect to the bottom, however, and you can see our wool's already coming right over perfectly. You'll see this is a very, it's a lot faster than the built craft pipes, and I just think pneumatic tubes are cool, so I like using them. So we already got eight wool, and this is just going to continuously run. And, uh, yeah, he was just cheered, and the wool went right through. So this is actually working to a T right now. Uh, very cool. And we're going to add in more uh, things as we go, and breed some more sheep and get a bunch of them going. Now, 
now that that's done, uh, we are going to do something in the nether, which is start the lava factory, or at least explore the nether. And I built the nether portal all the way down here, but the nether portal kind of spawned me in a really crappy area. Uh, it's safe. I mean, I can walk around. Oh, that's not safe. How in the hell? Man, that scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I don't know why in the world he was there. Come over here. Yeah, I'm over here. Ah, da, 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 da. There we go. He must have came through the portal and... Oh, that was weird. Anyway, uh, there's no nether fortress anywhere near here. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna say goodbye to this nether spawn and head back. Now, what I did, I basically ran around in the nether until I found a spawn for the nether. And this is lagging a lot getting back. But now we're here. And, uh... Yeah, so I found another fortress, and I used Mistcraft linking books. And I will show you exactly what a linking book is here in a sec. But let's run over to our magical mods chest and grab the linking books that I have out of there. So we have the nether linking book, and then we have our book stand. Now basically, to make a linking book, you just need a book, and you put it in the crafting table. It's very simple. And this is basically going to track exactly where you are right now. So if I were to make this linking book, it would link me right back to this position right here. Now, I already have one back to the overworld and the nether. So if we place down our book stand, which is where we place our books, and then just right click, it's going to place our book right there. And it looks really nice. It says the nether. We can name them uh, later on using a tool from Mistcraft. But when we right click on him, you're going to see we can take him out, carry him around, or we can right click here and when we just left click here it will take us to the nether and uh, this is the spawn that I had and then we have the overworld book here and then I can go right back now you always kinda wanna carry around a couple books with you to make linking books so let me make a uh, linking book back to the overworld here just in case something were to happen uh, I like carrying around a linking book with me at all times and yeah, the nether. So there is another stronghold down there, but uh, I'm more interested in where lava is around here. And it seems like there's lava up this way, but that uh, that's not quite enough lava than what we need. No, wait, I'm going the wrong direction. We should be going up this way. Now I am looking for blaze spawners, and I will tell you why later. But we'll be doing something really cool with Blaze Spawners and the uh, Soul Shards mod. If you know what Soul Shards already is, I already lost where my linking book is, that's a problem. But if you already know what Soul Shards is, then uh, you know what I'm doing. But if you don't, then I will probably get into that next episode and show you. Now here's where this is. So I want to go up, and we already have one of these guys. So let's kill him. No head, which is, you know, that's okay. And let's head up this way. And I think I might just make... Do I have any cobblestone? I mean, no. I'll probably have to run back to the overworld. I might just use this linking book. You can also do these in your hand. You don't need a book stand. It's just kind of a safe way to store them uh, in a set position. So, that's another mod that's added by... Or a mob that's added by this game, the fire bat. He's kind of a pain in the butt. So, yeah. Now, I do want to set it up, our lava factory, probably down there. So, I might want to... Let's do this. Let's fall. Let's make a linking book to here. And then, let's go back to the overworld. As so. Grab a stack of cobblestone. And then, let's put... Uh, let's make another book stand. Yeah, let's do that. Book stands are really easy to make. Uh, I will show you just now how to make them. But, uh, yeah, they're really simple. So you just need two sticks. Uh, this will make me a bunch of sticks. But you just need two sticks and one piece of wood to make a, uh, linking book stand thing. And it's just like that. So very simple. And I just want to put this guy... Uh, we'll put it right here. So the back one is going to be for the lava, and then this one's going to be for the stronghold. So let's head back. 
that's going to put us right where we were. And, uh, yeah, there's the overworld book. And you don't want them laying down, because they can take damage. If I hit that, you're going to see it took some damage. And if you take too much damage on these, they will break, and we don't want that. So, uh, yeah, I should have made a book stand, because every time you use it, it's going to kind of just, like, boom, gone. So, let's make a little platform out into the center here. And I'm going to encase this, just in case some gas come. But, you know what, I'll do this, and then I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back. And uh, we have a nice little shelter here for now. Uh, the ceiling's not completely done, but it kind of looks cool. Uh, if you're wondering why I use cobblestone instead of something cooler like uh, the Zycorium or something like that, cobblestone is blast resistant in the uh, nether. So, at least I think it is. So that will keep from any gas uh, destroying our fun time. And if you're wondering why I made the ceiling out of glass when glass is the like least blast resistant object in the game, uh, I have no idea. I'm special. So anyway, uh, I got a linking book stand. I don't know why I'm calling it a linking book stand. It's a book stand for our uh, overworld book. So let's head back there, and then I just want to set up uh, the simple lava pumping uh, that we want to do right now. So we're going to need a build craft pump, and if you guys have watched any of my series before, you already know what this is. But it's basically going to allow us to pump lava, and we need a mining well first, which is a lot of iron, but that's okay. We're going to need... Uh, 4, 10, 13 iron, and some wood, and some other stuff. So let's grab all that, grab some cobble, I have some, and then 13 iron and a redstone, 13 iron, I hope I got this right, that would be kind of cool and awesome. So now we need to make uh, some more, you guys have seen me make these, uh, gears. Yeah, gears. So let's make, uh, I'm only going to need one of these. I might even have some other ones somewhere else, but I don't want to go get them. I'll just make new ones to stone, and then we surround stone with iron now. And that will give us an iron gear. And then we just want to put him, I think it was there, going like that. And then we need, no, I think it's like that. And then we just need an iron pick which I will make right now using my handy dandy minium stone which I still love get me an iron pick and uh, put him right there right there right there there we go mining well and then we also need a tank to make that into a uh, pump now the mining well is something that we can use uh, maybe I'll show you guys what it does in the future it basically just builds all the way down or digs all the way down to bedrock and then back up, and then it's basically done. You can move it, do it again, etc. Uh, it's an easy way of mining, just it takes a while, and it uses a fair bit of energy, but not that much. So, I mean, we could easily do it if we wanted to, but we don't really have a reason to right now, so uh, that's okay. Now, I do want to make, actually, huh, what do I want, what do I want to do here? We need some waterproof pipes. Yeah, we have some. Uh, I am going to want some more, though, so I'll take those. And then, do I have any more pipe waterproof? No, let's just use our handy dandy minium stone to uh, change this into the type of thing I need, which is cactus green. We'll just do it this way, easy, to red, and now to green. Okay, change that into pipe waterproof, and make those waterproof. Now we do need to store the lava in something, and that is going to be, I don't know, you know what? I'll do that next episode. We're going to be making a lot of stuff for our uh, lava factory next episode. Actually, I'll make the redstone engines right now. And then I'll sign off. Because this episode might be running late. I don't think it is. But uh, if not, you guys get an early ended episode today. And that is perfectly okay. I do not have any wood. That is a bit of a problem. Uh, and it's, you know, dark out. So... Uh, yeah, I don't have any. Let's sleep, and then go chop down something. I'll be right back when I, uh, get that set up. Okay, guys, I am back, and, uh, I got some wood, because we're gonna need a lot of, uh, gears, actually. So let's get a fair amount of them. Four, probably we're gonna need more, but, uh, 
Yeah, you know what? I'll make those now. So I think we're just going to need four more, actually, to get the amount of gears that we need. And I might actually run out of wood in the process, but that's okay. And then we're also going to need a bunch of pistons, I believe. But let's just check. We want to make redstone engines. And you've already seen me make the uh, hobbyist steam engines. Yeah, we're going to need a piston and then more wood. But uh, these basically allow... If you guys have seen my uh, series as beef series is wow that was great grammar by me but if you guys have seen my uh tech it series z, z, then you'll know uh what these do they basically just allow things to be pumped out of something uh in this case we're going to be pumping lava out of the um the thingy the pump yeah pump i am really out of it i am sorry so let's grab our gears, set them up like that. We want four of these, which is why I made four of everything. Grab four glass, and then we are still going to need more wood. So I'm going to have to run out and grab more, but uh, I'll probably keep it on for that. Grab our first redstone engine, and then let's just go grab some more wood. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any cool stories. Let's see how this guy's doing. If there's any cool stories that have happened lately. We're up to 17. See? It's working well. Um, the purple guy showed up at baseball again. Wearing all purple. That was kind of weird. Uh, being sick was not fun. Uh, I couldn't talk, literally, like, on Sunday. I was trying to talk and just no words were coming out. So I kind of laid in bed and did nothing for... 12 hours, which was really, really nice, let me tell you. Um, my math teacher decided that it was time for a huge test today, and I think I actually aced it. So, pat on the back to myself right now, because that was skill. And I know you guys could care less about that, but I am a proud little human being. So, and I can't craft things, so, good on me. So let's come back over here, put these back in. And we'll make the rest of our redstone engines. Four of them. Perfect. Let's head back to the nether and set these guys up. Back to the nether and into our little base. Now, I think we're going to put it right... Are you kidding me? I don't have a perfect center. This is going to drive me crazy. Uh, we'll put it in the corner then. Okay, right here. Yeah, that'll be good. And then we just want to put... Uh, how should I do this? We'll go like that, and then place down the pump. And you guys can't really see it. Well, you know what? I'll show you. But he is going to... Yeah, there we go. That's going down to the lava. And as you can see, we're kind of at an endless lava point right here. So this is basically going to run forever. But uh, yeah, we need to power this guy. So let's grab our redstone engines and just kind of surround him. And then we'll actually use the red alloy wire, kind of, if I can. Uh... No, that's not going to reach that far. So let's make a couple levers. I can make a few. One, two. I actually might only need two if I use my red alloy wire here. So let's do these two in that corner. Ah, no, I just need two levers. That's good enough. And then we just need to connect our uh, waterproof pipes. And you're going to see really quickly that lava should start coming up out of this guy. Uh, I might need a... No, lava should come up out of him. Why isn't lava coming up out of him? Oh, there we go. There it is. Perfect. Now, I actually, I don't want the lava going that way. I want it to go... Uh, I don't want it to go like that either. Yeah. I want it to go up, up, and then I'm going to need two more to go down right there. But that is going to be all for this episode. Uh, we're going to get into more of this in the next episode, how we're going to convert this into energy. And uh, that's going to be really neat, I promise. So let's end, up, end off the episode here. Uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.